Your splendor. There's not enough words to describe the awesome wonder of your power. Of your power.
Amen. Amen. Everybody glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. I'm glad to be back. I was out this past week traveling. I traveled up to Jackson, sang in two church services, and now I'm back down, uh, overcoming a, a voice injury. So if I sound bad this morning, y'all just keep that to yourself, all right? And we'll talk about it when it's better, all right? We're going to sing, there's power in the blood. Y'all ready to worship? I hope so. If you've had as bad as a week as I had, I hope you're ready to come and give it all to God. Amen. in this house. Maybe just maybe just there, there's just one person that can testify. Pastor, God has been good and God has been faithful. Anyone in this house today, 
Come on, give God another great big hand all over this house. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I know there are a number of needs represented in this sanctuary today. Many of you have been facing a number of things in your life, in your body, and in your health. And I know that the Lord is able today to move and, and touch your body physically today. There's nothing impossible, absolutely nothing impossible with the Lord today. If you need a touch from the Lord in your body this morning, I want you to step out from where you are and we want to be able to pray for you this morning. And I want us to believe God today that He's going to touch and He's going to heal this morning. Hallelujah. Do you believe it today? I want you to stretch your hands this way. Several that need a touch from the Lord. Come on, if you need God to do something in your life, step out from where you are. We want to pray over you, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, emotional, no matter what it is today. I want you to give God the opportunity. Amen. Listen to me today. Give God the opportunity to touch your life. Amen. Let's go to the Lord this morning. All over this house, will you stretch your hands this way this morning? If you'd like to come and just partner with us in prayer and pray for these precious saints of God today, you're, you're able to do that. So, Father, we thank you today. And we thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust and our confidence in you. We thank you today that you're our healer. And we call upon you, asking that you would touch, asking that you would move, asking that you would heal from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Let your healing healing virtue flow today whatever she needs today Lord I pray for healing and strength in my brother's life Lord you know what he's walked through the past several weeks today and I'm asking for the mighty power of God and your healing virtue to flow from the top of his head to the sole of his feet Lord let him feel and sense your touch and your presence in the name of Jesus by your stripes we declare healing today in the name of Jesus Father we're believe in you today. God, you're able. And Lord, we put our confidence in you. That's all we can do, sister. Knowing that we're in the palm of his hand. And his hands are greater and stronger than ours. And we put our confidence in you today. That you're the healer. We call it forth right now. And we bind the enemy in Jesus' name. And I ask that you touch and you minister today. But Lord, we're believing you today. In the name of Jesus, every issue that he's been dealing with in his body. I'm asking God for your touch. I'm asking God for your healing virtue. We stand on the promise of your word that there is nothing impossible with our God. Come on, pray with me this morning, church. We're believing you today. We're trusting you. Every need in this house right now. God, you're able today. Touch my brother today. Give strength in his body. Every, Lord, every bit of sickness, joint pain, issue, whatever it may be, I'm asking that you would touch and you would minister to him today. By your stripes, we declare healing, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you are bigger than any sickness. You're bigger than any disease. With God, there is nothing impossible. And we put our confidence in you and our trust in you. Move in Sally Joe's life right now. Touch her today. Let her feel your touch. Let her feel your strength today. Lord, let her leave here in a different way than she came. We're trusting and believing today. In the name of Jesus, will you lift your hands all over this house and begin to give him praise. Begin to give him thanks today for his healing touch. Father, healing in the hearts and lives of people right now. Come on, receive it from the Lord. I receive healing in my body. I receive healing in my family. Healing in my mind. Healing in my marriage. I receive it today. And we thank you for it today. We thank you for it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we call it so in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a great big hand. Come on, give Him a great big hand. All over this house, give Him praise. Hallelujah. Will you be so kind? Shake someone's hand. Fellowship with someone. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah to God. Good to see you in the presence of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And while you're taking time to fellowship, I have um, 
some papers that I want you to there hand out. Can I get some ushers? Make sure everyone there gets one of these, if you will. There is Help me make sure everyone in this house Lord. gets one, please. How are you? somebody come on let's try that one more time praise the Lord somebody you might be seated in the house of God let me just share a couple of things with you today I trust um, I trust everyone received a prayer commitment and we'll be sharing a little bit more about that in a few more moments in the message this morning but these are going to be very important for you today and for you to have these over the next few weeks. And I, I want to go ahead and thank you in advance for joining in prayer with us. So glad that you're here today. There's no better place to be. And I know it sounds so redundant uh, every week that I say this. But I, but I really mean this and I believe this. There's no better place for you to be than in the house of the Lord. We are in some serious times. And before I minister this morning... After they get through um, having a time of worship, we're going to have a moment that we're all going to stand and we're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to pray for um, Israel uh, today and the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. I don't care what the narrative is on television. Um, I don't care what the news commentators have to say. Uh, and, and what is tragic is how they sympathize with Hamas and Iran, yet the Jewish people can be slaughtered. And, um, and, and that gets a bypass. We, Americans, for whatever reason, we, very, we have short-term memory, don't we? And, and e even churches have short-term memory. But I don't want that to be the case. I want us to make sure that we lift up Israel this morning and the peace of Jerusalem. Several things that are taking place that I want to make sure that you're aware of because some of these things are happening very soon. Uh, of course, we should be back. We will be back on regular schedule this Wednesday night. Uh, pasta bar, uh, salad, garlic bread, all of that. So make sure that you're here around 515 through 515 and, and, and 615. You come for dinner, and it's uh, going to be a powerful time. Uh, we're in the study of the book of Revelation. A quick sound system update. Um, we are patchworking. We're, we're trying to do everything that we can to get this sound system to, uh, to, to last us. And, uh, and by the grace of God, we are. And we are at $2,500 right now towards our $4,200 goal. Can you give God a great big hand for that? And um, if you would like to help us, 
uh, you can uh, designate that on a tithing envelope, uh, on your uh, check or tithing envelope. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that, and that would be a big help to us. We have some ministry opportunities for you to be able to get involved, not just coming to the church, but participating in the life and in the ministry of the church. And on the back table, there's some areas in which you can sign up and be able to help with some ministry opportunities. Um, also, on that sign-up list, uh, in just a few weeks, we're going to be having a men's breakfast. We, were, we will have that on a Sunday morning. That is correct, a Sunday morning at 8 a.m., all you need to do, men, is show up. I wanna, uh, we're going to eat breakfast. I'm going to, uh, just for one hour until Sunday school, I want to share my heart with you. I want to pray for you, and I want us to fellowship together. That's going to take place on the 28th. Also, on that same sign-up list is opportunity for the Women of Grace Garden Paint Party. We need you to sign up if you want to participate. We, we must have you sign up. And that is for the purpose of purchasing items and preparing. That way we don't overspend on any of these things. So thank you so much for that. Mother's Day, I cannot believe it. Mother's Day is soon to approach. And we, we, uh, we do something a little special on Mother's Day. I want you, if you will, um, either... Uh, Bring, uh, send, a, send a picture in of your mother, uh, a picture with, with you and your children, a picture of your mother, and we want to pay tribute to the mothers uh, on Mother's Day. We can email that, or, or you can hand that to Miss Jennifer. Whenever you, if you give that to Miss Jennifer, make sure that that's in an envelope with your name on it. That way we can get that right back to you. But this will be a very special day for you to be able to honor your mother and men, for you to be able to honor your wife, a uh, picture of her with the kids or, or, or what have you. But uh, this is open to everyone. You bring a picture of your mother and that special lady and uh, that special um, wife, mother, um, all of that. So make sure that you're aware of that. So a number of things that are taking place, and uh, we're excited. But very important, this weekend coming up, is our empowerment weekend and I want you to make sure that you're here for our empowerment weekend I don't want to waste your time and I don't want this to be a waste of my time uh, I want to come and hear the word of the Lord I was in service yesterday with sister Sandra Hancock and whatever your view is of women preachers I don't care God uses women to preach the word of God. Can I hear a great big amen? And uh, we totally and completely endorse women in ministry. And we had a wonderful move of God yesterday morning. And, and I'm telling you, I am 100% confident that every single night, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning, that the Word of God is going to be brought forth and you're going to be strengthened and you're going to be encouraged. Now, I'm also going to ask you this. Please don't embarrass me by not showing up. Let me say that again. Please don't embarrass me or your church by not showing up. Pastor, you're giving me the guilt trip. Good. Be here. Come. We're believing God for miracles. We're believing God for healings. We're believing God for people to rededicate their life to the Lord. And I want you to be a part of that. Amen. If this is your first time being with us, or you haven't been with us in a season, you are our honored guest. And we encourage you that on your way out, you stop at the information table right as you're leaving the sanctuary. There's a gift bag. There's a card. Fill that out clearly and uh, completely for, for us. And... Uh, you can place that into one of the black boxes that's right on the side and pick you up a gift, and we would be so appreciative of that. We also want to welcome our online family as well. Amen. Can we give all of our guests a great big hand today? Amen. Ushers, come. Let's receive this morning's tithe and offering. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. I can tell you, um, I can tell you church, the need is great, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the work of the kingdom. And I know that as God gets it from you, 
God knows how to get it to you. It's no secret antidote. I just believe that God honors those who give. And, uh, you know, he, he owns it all anyway. And so thank you so much. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you for how you're going to bless today. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone says amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Amen. Can we just stand back up and let's get ready to worship again. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad that you always trust in God? Perfect submission. Oh, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never submission and all is at rest and I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my step so this is my story and this is my song Praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. 
So I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. And I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never never fail. Amen. Aren't you glad that you just trust in God? In that mist when you're just in the valley and you don't know your way out, that you could trust in God. When you've had a long week at work and you ain't been resting, that you could just give it to God. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail, and I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why, oh, that's why, that's why I trust him, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why, oh, that's why. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. Oh, He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never. Remain standing with us. I just want to pray for this, this precious family. You know, it's, it's not easy when you're dealing with a child that has special needs. And uh, we love this family, and it's a struggle for them. And, you know, it's easy to pass judgment at times, but the best thing that we can do is love on them, okay? And, um, and uh, this is their church. And what we want to do is just pray for this family and, and what they're going through right now, you know, and, and us have compassion. 
and uh, I, I don't care about the disruption of our service. That, that doesn't bother me at all because these things happen, okay? I've been in ministry long enough, and, and I've had things like this happen. But when things do happen, um, we just need to pray. And God, bless this family because they're walking through it. And what needs to take, take place is the protection on mom and grandma and also wisdom for them to make right decisions for him to be able to uh, protect from his own self. And so can we just right now um, love on this family and just pray over them right now? So, Father, we pray over this precious family. Lord, I ask for wisdom and help. Lord, that, that embarrassment and fear of what people think would be diminished, would be dis diminished, and they would know that Kingston is here for them and Kingston loves them and that's what the church is for. Lord, we don't throw people away. We love people and we love this family. And you know everything that's taken place and I ask you to touch hearts and minds and lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And while you're standing, let's pray for the nation of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem right now. Amen. We, we need to stand in solidarity and in support and ask God to give the, the leaders wisdom and understanding and discernment in these matters, right? And not only Benjamin Netanyahu and the Knesset, but also uh, our president, the chiefs of staff, the joint chiefs of staff, uh, the Congress, the Senate, a lot of things could be taking place over the next several weeks. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name and we lift up the nation of Israel. We lift up beautiful Zion right now. And I ask, God, that you would reach down your hand and touch the apple of your eye. Touch the chosen people right now, God. You see everything that is taking place all along our world. And I'm asking God that you would intervene in this. You see what's taking place with the minds and the hearts of the leaders of Iran. What's taking place, everything going on with Hamas. You see, Lord, the, the retaliation that's going to take place from Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu and the Knesset and those that are involved. And I pray that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them a resiliency, that you would give them just a boldness right now, that you would shine down on them and protect your people. They are the apple of your eye. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch and, Lord, just send a miracle, God. That's what needs to happen. This thing can blow up in a powder keg, Lord, any moment. But I ask, God, that you would intervene. And I pray for our nation that, God, we would stand in solidarity, that we would support Israel. And we pray over our president. And we pray for those that are behind the scenes. We pray for our chiefs of staff and our joint chiefs of staff. We lift up, God, military men and women, our Congress and our Senate. In the days, the hours, the days, weeks ahead, intervene, God. Intervene, God. You know everything behind the scenes, everything that's taken place. And we submit it into your hands. We're asking this in Jesus' name. And everyone says amen and amen. You might be seated this morning. I want you to take your Bibles with me. At this time, the boys and girls are dismissed to go to King's Kids. I want you to take your Bibles to the book of Haggai. It's right after the book of Zephaniah. The book of Haggai, chapter number 1. Once again, we're honored that you're here today. And I pray that this word is going to minister to your life. I pray that you're not going to leave here the same way that you came. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me get my remote.
Are you glad Brother Christian's back with us this morning? Amen. We're grateful for him. Praise the Lord. I have a word in my spirit for you, for this house, and I hope you're ready to receive it. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I said, if you're ready, say, I'm ready. Amen. The book of Haggai, chapter number 1, the Bible says, in the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord. By Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetal, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I want you to listen to the next few verses. Go up to the mountain, bring wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because my house that is waste. And ye run every man into his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, upon cattle, and upon all the labor of thy hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Sheetal, and Joshua the son of Josedek the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent it to him, and the people did fear the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the the Lord stirred up the spirit of the uh, Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetal, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and they did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. My prayer is that God will stir you up. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I I want you to get refocused. I want your mind to get back on what the Lord has to say to you this morning. I want the Lord to stir us up. Amen. I want the Lord to stir this house. I want the Lord to stir you, and I want the Lord to stir me. So over the next few weeks, that's going to lead up to Pentecost Sunday, I want to begin a series entitled, Awakening the church, awakening the church, combating the slow erosion. I knew the patient before she died. It was 10 years ago. She was very sick at the time, but she did not want to admit it. There was only a glimmer of hope at best, but that hope could become a reality only with radical change. She wasn't nearly ready for that change. Indeed, she was highly resistant to any change, even though she was very sick, even though she was dying. I told her the bad news bluntly. You are dying. I hope I said those words with some compassion. I did feel badly sharing the news. 
but it was the only way I could see to get her attention. I even told her that at best she had five years to live. At that time, I said those words. I don't really think uh, I, I don't really think I was that optimistic. I would not have been surprised if she died within the year. But she was not only in denial, she was angry in denial. I'll show you, she said. I'll prove you wrong. I'm not dying. Her words were fierce. Her words were defiant. Her words were angry. It was time for me to leave. I'd done all I could do. And I left. I was not angry. I was sad. I was very sad. Now, to her credit, she was right up to a point. She did not die in five years. She proved resilient and survived another ten years. But her last decade, though she was technically alive, was filled with pain, was filled with sickness, was filled with despair, I'm not so sure if her longer-term survival was a good thing. But she never got better. She slowly and painfully deteriorated. And then she died. I'm not talking to you about a person today. I'm talking to you about a church. And over the next several weeks, I want to look at not anybody else's church. I want to look at our church. A church, when you begin to look at the story of the church that I just read, it was a church that was probably born out of vision. But it was a church that died because she no longer had a vision. When you begin to think about autopsies, autopsies are performed on humans to find out why they died. And the discoveries might give surviving family members information they need to avoid the same path as their loved one. Sometimes a forensic pathologist performs an autopsy to simply discover how a murder was committed or how an accident happened. And that information, as they look at it, it's always useful. And many times it can bring awareness or it can bring justice. And I want to tell you today, it doesn't mean that autopsies are pleasant. Jesus, he told Peter that the church will never die. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell or the forces of Hades will not overpower it. Did God not say that to Peter, that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? Is that what the scripture says? But understand this, indeed the church will never die, but churches have and are dying. And it's my prayer that as we look at the church, And though at times it may be painful to watch, I believe that as we look at some things over the next few weeks, it will prove helpful to the laity, to you, and to leaders concerning our church. 
Now, I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you, to, and I want you to perk up and be all ears today because as many as 100,000 churches in America right now, 100,000 churches, I want you to get that number in your mind, 100,000 thousand churches in America right this moment are showing signs of erosion and decay and towards death even right now. I want you to hear me today. I want you to hear me and I want you to listen to me. May God give us, may God give us the courage Everyone in this house, may God give us the courage to make the changes necessary to give new life to this church. Can I hear an amen? I'm praying that everyone in this room will get new courage, new courage to bring new life to this church. And over the next several weeks, you're going to be asked a simple question. Will you make a prayerful commitment? If our church needs anything right now, it is a prayerful commitment. We need finances, we need volunteers, we need ministries to be relaunched, but above all of that, we need to make a commitment to prayer. And the commitment is between you and God. And perhaps God will raise up an army of church members and attendees who are no longer satisfied with business as usual. I'm going to say it again, and I don't mean this in any harsh way. It, I, I am not impressed for how long you've been at this church. I don't know how deep your roots run, but I am here to tell you, my friend, that God wants to do something fresh and new at Kingston Assembly, and he wants you to be a part of it. He wants you to be excited about it. He wants you to anticipate it. He wants you to believe for it. He wants you to expect it. Can I hear an amen in this house today? Give God a shout of praise. That was pretty weak this morning. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Not because I'm telling you, you either believe it or you don't believe it today. Now, the trauma of observing an autopsy is only beneficial if it is received as a warning to those that are still alive. Now, over the next few weeks, this is not about dwelling on the past, but this is about bearing fruit for the future. And I also want to tell you, listen to me, beloved, that I'm not speaking about all that's wrong with the church. But I but because there's a lot of good things that are happening. There's a lot of good things that are taking place in the church. How many of you believe that? Amen. And so I, I believe that with all of my heart. That I'm not going to waste time speaking of all the wrong with the church. And let me just tell you, every church has things that they're struggling with, they're dealing with. They're, they're, there's a, a pastor called me before service this morning, before I got up uh, here to preach this morning. I spent 20 minutes on the phone with a pastor from a whole other state that is discouraged, that's ready to quit, that's ready to get out of the ministry. He's tired of the drama, tired of the struggle at his church, tired of the division going on and he's frustrated and he says, Pastor, I just want to stand behind the pulpit and blast the congregation and I said, you need to take a step back, you need to take a break and you need to get your heart in tune with the Spirit of the Lord. That is not the answer. There's frustration going on in churches. There's struggles going on in churches and he shared some things at what's taking place at his church and sometimes it is the people but sometimes it's inward too from a pastor. I want you to understand today that God, this is God's church. God wants to build his church 
grow his church. But my friend, you got to be a part of the picture. You got to be involved in the life of the church. You got to be involved in the ministry of the church. You got to make a commitment to his church. Can I hear an amen? This prayer commitment is a positive challenge to take the hill, so to speak. And so here is our prayer commitment, and I gave this to you this morning. And if you did not get that this morning, I want you to make sure that you grab one because I'm really, listen to me, church, I'm going to ask you, pray this prayer each day that you can, every moment that you can. Let's pray this together. God, open my eyes that I may see my church as you see it. Let me see where change needs to take place. Even if it's painful to me, and use me, I pray, to be an instrument of change, whatever the cost. Can I hear an amen? Now, beloved, I'm going to encourage you to pray this. Open my eyes that I may see my church as you see it. Let me see where change needs to take place even if it's painful to me. You see, you're going to go through pain no matter what. You're either going to go through the pain of change or the pain of staying the same. But either way, you're going to go through some pain. And let me tell you, Kingston, and I know there's already been a lot of changes in, in almost a year that I've been your pastor. There's been a lot of changes already. And we can continue to go through the pain of change, and more changes are coming. Or we can get comfortable in staying the same. Either way, it's going to be painful. Can I hear an amen in this house? Here's some questions for further thought. If Kingston Assembly was given a physical exam today, what do you think the doctor's diagnosis would be? And please keep this to yourself today. Would it be healthy? Would it be slightly sick? Would it be very sick? Or would it be dying? Let me ask you this question because here's the reality. Whether you like what I'm going to say or not, what's happening at your home, it affects this house. So let me get down to business with you in your home and in your marriage. If it was given a physical exam today, would the diagnosis be healthy, slightly sick, very sick or dying? Most people that I know would never choose to die. And they know heaven's waiting on them. <laughs> but, but there's something about living and the desire to live. And is your family, is it healthy? Is it slightly sick? Is it very sick? Or is it dying? And I'm here to tell you, wherever it's at, do something about it. Do something about it. Don't wait till it's flatlining. And it's almost, do something about it. And if I'm very honest with you, and, and I'm going to be, and I'm going to call things for what I say, when we came to this church almost a year ago, I normally would never come through any place, and I always encourage pastors, don't you go into a place and make sudden changes to any ministry. You go in there and you, you wait for a year and don't do anything. But my whole theology and philosophy on that changed. Because here's the reality. When I came to Kingston, this church was in survival mode. And you can, you can sit in denial. You don't have to accept what I'm telling. You don't have to believe it. I'm just telling you how it was. Kingston was laying on the operating table with paddles because it was flatlining almost dead, done, over. Do you understand that? 
And if you're laying on the hospital table and you're flatlining and you're dying, somebody better get in there and put the paddles on and do something very dramatic to bring life to it. Therefore, that's why a lot of changes have already been made because we're trying to bring life back again. And, I, and I've got good news to tell you. There is life back again. Will you shout hallelujah in this house? We are not in survival mode anymore. We are marching forward and we're going to do something great for the kingdom of God. Give God a great big hand. But there's some that's here. And you look at what's happening in your life. You're on the operating table and you need some life right now. And it's time that you allow the power of the Holy Spirit to bring life back again to your home. Life back again to your family. Life back again to your marriage. Life back again to your children. He'll do it if you'll let him. Will you shout hallelujah? So, why do so many church members in dying churches, why do so many church members in dying churches refuse to see the decline in the health of the church? Let me tell you something today. Here's what takes place. The decline in churches began with the slow erosion. It all begins with the slow erosion. And this slow erosion is the worst type of decline for churches because members at times have no sense of urgency for change. Pastor, we don't mind having a new pastor, but keep things the way they have always been going. Come in here and preach and don't make any changes or do anything else. That is unfair for any pastor. Amen. They and and when you have members and attenders that's been coming to a church for a long time, they see the church on a regular basis, and they don't see the gradual decline that is taking place right before their eyes. And many times in a lot of churches, the very first decline is in their physical facilities. Now let me just say this, what the Lord has blessed this church with, we have incredible facilities that are that is absolutely debt free. Can we give God a great big praise and a great big hand for that? There is nothing, there is nothing that can limit this church from being able to move forward. We have a beautiful sanctuary. We have room to grow. And as God blesses our church, we can go to two services and see God do great things. We have a family life center that over the next, hope I, I was, I'm hoping to do it this summer, I don't know if it's going to work out, where we can have basketball camps and volleyball camps and sports camps. We have the room to have after school program. We have room to have daycare. We have room to be able to launch Kingston Christian Academy. We have everything that we need for that to take place. We're right on the main highway. We're right on the main thoroughfare. And let me just tell you, we have gorgeous facilities to be able to accommodate people. Can I hear an amen? That's what we have right with our church. We have some of the greatest, sweetest, kindest people that go to this church. We have people that have been here for years, and they are. They tell me, Pastor Poole, uh, we're so glad you're here, and whatever you feel in your spirit that the Lord wants you to do, you go for it. No resistance at all. And I'm so grateful for that. What we need, what we need is look at every single ministry and say, Pastor Poole, I'm going to be one that's going to stop the erosion of every weak place at this church. Now listen, so where does this decline, the decline begin? There becomes a decline. The decline is in the vibrant ministries that once existed. The decline begins to take place 
is the prayer lives of the members who remain. The decline begins to take place is in the outward focus of the church. So the erosion begins when there's no longer vibrant ministries to offer. The erosion begins when the prayer lives of the people of God that come to the church begins to erode. The decline begins to take place when we are inward focus and not outward focus. And inward focus is the mindset, it's me, 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 and all about me. Don't question me concerning, well, pastor, where's our hymnals at when people aren't filling the pews yet? I'll amen myself. Well, pastor, what happened with this and what happened with that? Let me tell you something, beloved. You better get the focus off of you because I love you, but it is not about you. Can I hear an amen? It's not about your song. Listen, the song don't even belong to you anyway. The song belongs to him. Can you shout hallelujah? I sing a song not to make me feel good, not to worship me, but I sing to worship him, an audience of one. Somebody shout hallelujah. The decline is in the connection with the community. The decline is in the hopes and the dreams of those who remain. This is where the erosion begins to happen. Let me say this again. The decline in church begins with a slow erosion. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a month. It doesn't happen in a year. It happens over a time span. And in that time span, ministries are cut. Prayer time stops. Outward focus of the church is null and void. There's no connection in the community. The hopes and dreams of those that are still here feel that our best days are gone and there's no more hope for the church. We've seen the glory days. Keep your hopes and your dreams alive for the next. Can I hear an amen in this house? God has got fresh wind and fresh oil and fresh fire for the people of God right now. Can I hear an amen? Decline is everywhere in church. Everywhere in church. And now I'm preaching of the church universal. Decline is everywhere in the church. But unfortunately, many don't see it. Or many don't want to see it. Or many don't want to admit that it's even there because this is the church that my grandmother, people that I've known for all these years were a part of, and I dare not to say anything negative. But I'm going to tell you something. If there's a sickness in your body, if you don't go get it looked at and checked, you'll die a slow death or a sudden death. And I won't to be the pastor here that's going to look at this ministry and do a thorough autopsy on it and say, we've got to stop the erosions. Can I hear an amen? I want you to go back in time with me to 520 B.C. It's told of the Old Testament book of Haggai. There was a remnant of Jews that had returned to Jerusalem after a long exile. They returned to a devastated town and they began to rebuild. And they first built the temple. That was their first order of business. It was to build the temple. It was to build the house of God. And they began to lay the foundation. But as they began to lay the foundation, the Bible says that they stopped working on the temple and they began working on their own homes for their own comfort. And for a decade, they did not do anything as far as work to the house of God. I want you to imagine the temple. I want you to imagine the house of God. I want you to picture the dirt accumulating on the foundation. 
I want you to picture the vines and the overgrowth beginning to cover the foundation. I want you to begin to see the decline. And in the midst of of the decline, in the midst of the erosion, and in the midst of the people's comfort, and in the midst of the people being at ease, God speaks. Somebody say God speaks. He wants to know. He will, God wants to know why did the Jews not notice the decline? God wants to know why they stopped building the temple. What happened that caused you to stop? Inventory time. What happened? that caused you to take the back burner? What happened that caused you to stop giving? What happened to you that caused you to stop praying? What happened to you where you say, I'm going to spectate rather than participate? What happened to you? And as for each and every person to figure out in your own life, but whatever it is, deal with it. Were you hurt? Then walk in forgiveness and receive it and move forward. Can I hear an amen? Were you overlooked? Then just say, okay, God, I feel that I was overlooked and begin to move forward. Let me tell you something, hurt. Pain happens to us all. You think that you've been hurt in church? Try being a pastor, my friend. And all the darts are pointing towards you. You can't do nothing right in some people's eyes and you can't do anything wrong in some people's eyes. And then in some people's eyes, you're doing too much. In some people's eyes, you're not doing enough. It never, it never, it never ends. Pastor, how do you deal with it? I choose what I'm going to listen to. And I discern what the Holy Spirit wants me to hear and what the Holy Spirit wants me just to, to, just to put over my shoulder and keep moving forward. Can I hear an amen? And if you'll learn to do that, I don't have to respond to everything. I really don't have to listen to everything. Amen. I don't have to argue. And I, don't, I, I can choose my battles. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> what, what's happened that you've stopped? Can I talk to you, family? What's happened? Really, what's happened? Are, are, am I preaching to you this morning? What's, ha- what's happened to you? Well, pastor, I want to know what happened to them. No, 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 no. What happened to you? Pastor, if, 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 if the, the pastor would have, no, 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 no. Pastor, if my wife would have, no, 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 look in the mirror. If my husband, no, no, look in the mirror. If my children, what's your problem? Come on, sweetie pie. Change. It's what I need. It's what you need. I'm preaching to you this morning. The reason things erode in the house of God is they're eroding in your home. And we won't take the time to fix what's in the home so we can fix what's in the church. And the reason we haven't fixed the things in the nation is because we haven't fixed the things in the home. We got a church broken and we got a whole world broken. Well, if they'll fix themselves, don't work that way. Look in the mirror and take personal responsibility. Come on, somebody. Come on, say, Pastor, I love you. (laughs) Listen to this. The Lord of hosts says this. Well, go back. The Lord of hosts says this. These people say the time has not come for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. Is it a time for you for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? And I'm going to tell you something. God was angry. And God says, my house has got to be built. 
My house can't lie in ruins. And then he says this, when you brought the harvest to your house, I ruined it. You know why? This is the declaration of the Lord of hosts, because my house still lies in ruins while each of you is busy with your own house. What you brought into the house, I ruined it because you lost focus. I've been there, my friend. Over 2,500 years ago, the people of God had neglected building the house of God. And it seems as if the slow erosion was a problem with them too. And God didn't like it back then and God doesn't like it right now. And despite the glorious beginning, after two years the work stopped. It was mired in discouragement. It was derailed by a lack of focus. And I'm telling you my friend, if we lose our focus and are distracted from the purpose of God's church, this church will erode. Can I hear an amen? I want us to look around this sanctuary. Now you ready for the hard statement? In in, in five to ten years, the majority of the people in this church will be gone through a funeral. Hello? We don't like statements like that. If things that, listen, I'm trying to, I I don't want to say I, I. With the help of the Lord, we are trying to build a house for your grandchildren and your kids' kids. Now let me say the hard thing that you don't want to hear. This church has seven to ten years, if that, if major changes aren't made. Amen or oh me, but it's a fact. And I know you may not like that, but that's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching because we've got to awaken and we've got to stop the slow erosion. This church, someone else will either own this church or this property will be sold in seven to ten years if we don't stop the erosion. You can love me or hate me after this, but I will tell you the truth. We've got to do something, and we've got to do something now. 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 Strategic, Holy Ghost inspired change. Strategic, Holy Ghost inspired change. Not change for the sake of change. Not change to compete with what Agape, Ignite, Bethlehem, First Baptist of Laurel, uh, any, not, not to compete with anybody else. Strategic Holy Ghost inspired change that you and I buy into and say, okay, God, it's out of my comfort zone, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see your kingdom, your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Are you with me? There were some good reasons why they may have decided to stop the work of the temple. The land was desolate for 70 years of neglect. The work was hard. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of manpower. They suffered crop failure and drought. Their their hostile enemies resisted the work. They remembered easier times when they were in but they remembered easier times when they were in bondage in Babylon. But the problem was simply wrong priorities in place. Now listen to me, beloved. They were content to let the cause of the Lord suffer 
rather than give up their comfort. Did you hear that today? They were content to let the cause of the Lord suffer rather than give up their comfort. Instead, they should have felt no rest until the work of God was was as prosperous as their personal lives. They should have been as willing to sacrifice for the work of God as they were for their personal comfort and luxury. God saw through them in the days of Haggai and he sees through similar excuses today. God would raise up a prophet and he would be like an alarm clock. And it was very unwelcome, but it was very necessary. And I'm not telling you that I'm a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I could tell you things that I'm going to tell, things that I'm saying may be, my friend, unwelcomed, but some discussions we're going to have are very necessary. And I get it. We are a church moving forward. We are a, we're not a dead church. And let me just say, we are not dying. We are moving forward, and God is blessing, and we are growing. And we've got to be a part of the process, and I want to invite you to be a part of the process. But we're believing that God's going to send an influx of people to help perpetuate this ministry, and that this is a generational ministry. It's not my church. This is God's church. And God wants to bless our church, but he invites us along with the process. It's God's will for every church to grow, but I can tell you churches that are shutting down, God's not stopping them from shutting down. Well, we're just believing that God's going to intervene. You pray that all you want to, but until you get your hands to the plow and get to work, well, Pastor, I want to give you some ideas. And I want listen. I listen. I appreciate that. I'm gonna hear from the Lord first, Amen. And I appreciate the ideas, and I appreciate this and that. But but I I've got to be led by the Spirit. The shepherd's got to be led by the Spirit, and the shepherd can't let the sheep lead the shepherd. The shepherd's got to lead the sheep. Can I hear an Amen, Pastor? If you would do this, well, there might be reasons I can't do that. Well, Pastor, if this could happen, I, I may want that to happen, but the timing may not be there. Pastor, if you get this family involved, I may not be able to get that family involved because you don't know the full situation of what that family's going through right now. <laughs> there's, th- there's things that are known to me that are unknown to you, and it's pastoring, and it's ministry integrity. Well, once I get on the board, I'm going to make all. No, you're not. I'm not going to let that happen. But we're in charge. No, you're not. Do you understand the conversation that we have to have? Well, Pastor, I look at this church, and over the last several years, man, the, it, you know, the, the, the board's ran, the, and I don't know that situation. Well, the board has ran the church and ran this and ran that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, everything in the ministry has to be pastor-led and pastor-driven, directed by the Holy Ghost, given counsel by the administrating board. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? And this church has had incredible leadership. Historic leadership from Brother Hartshorn to Brother Scott Davis, who pastored this church longer than anyone has. And so much is owed to him and much honor and respect that should be given to him. And then the church went through a difficult season, like every church does. And then in just a few weeks, I'll be here for a year. And yes, a lot of changes has taken place. But I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, buckle up. Because we're going to go on a ride. And there's going to be more changes. There are going to be more changes. And we're going to be led by the Spirit to do that. And I don't want to be the guy that says, and I'm not. I want you to hear me, church. 
look at me. I'm not going to be the guy behind this pulpit that says, hey, y'all just trust me. Okay, y'all just trust me. No, 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 no. I want to lead you. And when I win, you win. When you win, I win. And when you win and I win and I win and you win, the kingdom wins. Amen? This church has such incredible potential. This ministry has such incredible potential. But here's what we got to do. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for it? I'm only giving you a little bit today. Got to stop the erosion. Say that with me. Stop the erosion. Come on, say it with me. Stop the erosion. And when we stop the erosion, that means we're, we're filling in some gaps, okay? And some of the gaps, whenever I first got here, some of the gaps, the very first thing that, that I've done when I got here is we got to make sure that that nursery is moving and operating and working. That's the first thing. If you don't have a nursery, shut your church down, you're done. You ain't going nowhere if the church don't have a nursery. So we painted that nursery and got that nursery looking good and looking nice for families. And I had help, and I'm grateful for that. Then the second thing, we, we relaunched children's ministry, and, and that's still a work in progress. And Miss Jennifer needs more help and volunteers to help in children's ministry. And those things are happening. And then we had my kids here and other young people with no youth pastor, and I believe strategically raising, doing your best to raise up leaders within the church. And the very first couple that God put into my heart and my spirit was Brody and Aaron. And they have done a marvelous job, and they love the kids at our youth. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me, beloved. I want you to hear me. I was a youth pastor, a very successful youth pastor for many, many years. I had hundreds of kids at one time in my youth ministry. They don't remember one sermon that I preached, but they do remember the times that they spent time and we built relationships with them. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't think we could have found a better couple at Kingston Assembly that is expecting their first child and helping and working with the youth ministry right here at Kingston Assembly. Can I hear a great big amen in this sanctuary? So we filled in the gap with the nursery. We filled in the gap with the children's ministry. We filled in the gap with uh, the youth ministry. And now we're looking at other ministries. We're, we're looking over the next several months to strengthen even more the Sunday school. And let me just tell you, if you want a strong Sunday school at Kingston, then you've got to come to Sunday school. And if you don't want a strong Sunday school, it will erode and it will die off because of lack of participation. Amen? Amen or oh me? (laughs) Over the next few weeks, we're restructuring and relaunching men's ministry. The women's prayer is already, they're already doing it. They're already praying. Man, I walk up in here and I get more encouraged standing. Listen, ladies, don't stop praying, please. I stand in that hallway. Y'all, unbeknownst to y'all a lot, I stand in that hallway or I open that door and I'm listening to you pray. And when I hear you pray over Jason Poole and Jennifer Poole and Rachel and Josiah and Caitlin, and I hear you, listen to me, congregation, I hear them praying and calling out your name and your family's name and this sister that does more for me than anything else. So that prayer ministry is happening and it needs to happen even more. And we've been praying. You know our struggles that we've dealt with and I'll just flat out say it, the struggles that we've had with music. And my wife, she's done a spectacular job, continues to be a help and a, and a blessing in the music ministry, and she will, she will continue to do that. But, but we've had a major gap, and it's been that way for a while, in music ministry here at Kingston. And I, took, I, I went to the ladies, and I said, I need y'all to pray because I need someone on that piano and somebody that will be faithful and that somebody that's going to be a blessing. And listen, look, Christian, I'm telling you the truth. I gave them that. They started praying, and it's only two weeks later you and I connected and called each other and talked and that's how God done it and then she uh, Sister Pat came what else can I pray with you about we need a drummer we need a drummer pray for us a drummer and guess what prayed for a drummer the following week I had a drummer amen somebody give God a great big hand 
God filled in that gap to stop the erosion. And Christian and I, we, we connected, and he's doing a marvelous job. And I want to listen, be merciful on him because we're still learning to work with each other and flow with each other. And you got to give, you got to give him an eye time and the team time. And 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 I, but he's gonna, he is anointed, has a heart for God, wants to be led of the Spirit. He is a young man with an anointing upon his life, and we want to help build that. We want to help see him grow and develop. There's preach in him, and God's gonna use him at Kingston in a mighty way and we've stopped that erosion can somebody shout hallelujah and we're believing God. Our, our drummer's got to go on furlough during the summertime with, with the group that he travels with. But God's going to give us more musicians and send us more people. Can I hear an amen in this house? So I don't want you to think that pastor's a pessimist or pastor's being negative. I'm just telling you, God's given the church momentum right now. And we've got to carry that momentum forward and see God do some great things. Amen, somebody. Are you with me? <laughs> I'm not talking about with me, but I'm talk- are you with the message that I'm giving you today? <laughs> Stop the erosion. Stop the erosion. Stop the erosion. Stop the erosion. We're, we're going to stop the erosion in this house with the help of the Lord. This is what I want you to pray. Gra- grab your paper. Grab your paper. Grab your paper. Grab a pen if you got one. Or write this on your phone, however you got to do it. Can I give you a prayer target from me? Can I give you something to pray for your pastor about? Give, and I'm going to say this again, to some of you, and I don't mean this negative, it's just a reality, to some of you, all I will ever be to you is a preacher. And if that's all I'm going to be to you, then that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but I want to be more than your preacher. I want to be your pastor. And you've got to let me involved, help, allow me to be involved in the process. If you'll let me be your pastor... And I, I went back, before you write anything down, I'm going to tell you right down, I went back, whenever I went back, I could be the guy that just says, trust me. I understand that trust has to be earned. I get it. Give me opportunity to let that trust be earned. If we were here, Pastor, why are you preaching like this? Is there problems? Let me, very clearly, there are no problems at all. Okay? I'm just telling you. Pastor's the district giving you, let me tell you something. I have the best relationship with our district. They're not trying to run me. They're not trying to run this church. Get all of that garbage out of your mind. And if you got anybody whispering those things to you, stop it. It's not happening. They're allowing me just to pastor the church, and I'm grateful for that. I'm saying all that to say this, I have to earn my trust. And I hope that we've earned it a little bit with you. I hope by now, and it's only, we haven't been here a year, in a few weeks we'll be here a year, but I hope that you sense that we're here. If that's not the case, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have bought property. We wouldn't have started building a home. So I want you to get that. I want you to understand that. So I've got to earn my trust. And I also understand the fact that there's some that want a preacher. And if you want a preacher, I'll be your preacher, okay? (laughs) I'll be your preacher. If you let me be your pastor, if you let me walk this journey with you and you'll walk this journey with me, I'll give you mercy, but you better make sure that you give me mercy. Amen? Now listen to me. Where we're going to go now, we've got to stop the erosion. Pastor, where are some other things eroding? I'm going to tell you where some erosions are at is lack of faithful attendance. 
that's got to be that that that's got to be strengthened. This is what I want you to pray. But this is what I want you to write down. I want. This is how I want you to pray for me. Pray that God will give me spiritual eyes to see what He wants to do next in this church. That I want you, God, will you open Pastor Poole's eyes that he can see? Will you open his ears that he can hear? Will you guide him and direct him? Come on, just write it. Eyes to see, ears to hear, lead and guide. <laughs> eyes to see, ears to hear, lead and guide. I'm going to say it again. Eyes to see, ears to hear, and lead and guide. Because I really do. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because I want to see this church do amazing things. I want them to do amazing things, not to get the next Facebook post. Look how full our, I could care less about that, that stuff. I want God to do something great. Boy, my time's getting away from me. Here we go. That's what I want you to see. What do they got to do? <coughs> this is what he says. Go up to the mountains and bring wood. How are they going to stop the erosion? How are they going to get the temple rebuilt? they got to go to the mountains and bring wood. God called them to work. Let me tell you, beloved, God's called you to work. God's called you to work. Young, old, God's called you to work. And he wants you to go to the mountain and get the wood. And this is what, how I look at it. That, that mountain represents the mountain of prayer, and that wood represents the, the, what you put on the fire, the sacrifice. God called them to work. God called you to work. And I know every one of us are in different seasons in our life. That There was a season you could do a lot for the Lord. But you're just not in that season anymore. Your ministry is in prayer. And that's great. But God's called you to work. Go to the mountains and bring the wood. Here's the next thing. Listen, sometimes God calls us, uh, sometimes God's calls needs work. Work is supported by prayer, not work that is neglected because of in pretense of spiritual service. We've got to work. We've got to pray. William Carey had the right idea. His motto was this, expect great things from God and attempt great things from God. Expect great things from God and attempt great things from God. Can we be bold as a church and do some great things for the kingdom of God? Amen. Can we be bold and do some great things for the kingdom of God? We're going to. Amen. We have to. And then he says this, the next one, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. It was time for God's people to start being concerned with pleasing Him instead of themselves. It was time for God's people to start being concerned with pleasing Him instead of themselves. And in their nice houses and prosperous lives, they took pleasure and were glorified. And now it was the Lord's turn. Three more. Look at this. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. When God was neglected, nothing worked right. I want, to, I want you to write that down. Take a picture of it, tweet it, post it, I don't care. They neglected the house of God and nothing worked right. Listen to me, beloved. This goes with everything in our personal lives as well. When God was neglected, nothing worked right. When God's neglected. Can I tell you, my friend, the reason why things might be a little hostile, uncomfortable, little haywire in your life or in your home. You can blame each other. But the fact is God has been neglected. God has been neglected. And when you neglect God, nothing will work out. 
I say that for the Jason Pool household. If I neglect God, there's nothing in my household that's going to work out. They were able to accomplish some things like building their own houses, but it didn't bring the satisfaction that it should have. Listen. For I called for a drought on the land. The problem wasn't Satan, but their priorities. Oh, Pastor, the enemy's attacking our church. We're seeing a decline. Pastor, the enemy's really fighting us. He's fighting us hard. No, my friend, you know there's a lack of priorities for God's house. I. I want to be careful what I say because it will get me in trouble. Can I just say it anyway? Can I just say it anyway? I'm going to. I seen a post yesterday on Facebook how people accused Disney of stealing our kids. And this is what they said. Disney, Disney didn't steal our kids. Travel Ball has stolen our kids. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to just leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. The problem wasn't Satan, but their priorities. We, we want to blame the devil on everything. And sometimes, I hate the devil. Amen. He can go back to hell where he came from. Glory to God. <laughs> but sometimes it's our misplaced priorities. Let's get priorities right. Let's get priorities right. Amen. and the oil it eroded because they neglected the Lord he neglected to bless their three basic crops the house of God will absolutely erode our families will erode the nation will erode when we neglect God Let God, everything erodes. We're not going to be that church. We're not going to be that people. Amen. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. You know why? Rachel and Josiah are worth it. Caitlin and Kelvin are worth it. Future grandchildren that I haven't even met, seen. Don't even know when I'll have them. They're worth it. This house is worth it. Can somebody say amen? Stand with me all over this house today. You got out, you're getting out early today. Man. I hope you're happy. Some of y'all like to start church at 10 o'clock, don't you? You're going to beat all the Methodists and the Baptists to the restaurant today. We got chicken legs being thawed out at our house. We're going home and cooking those. Hey, listen. Awakening the church, we're going to stop the erosion. Will you join me? Hey, will you join me? Will you join me and be part of the process? start, but before we stop it here, will you stop it in your home? Will you stop it in your home? Will you stop it in your home? Husbands, will you love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it? and respect your husband. Will you do it? Children, will you honor your parents? Will you get your home right? Will you get your home right? Will you get your home right? You get that home right? You don't neglect God? 
things are going to fall in to doors will open God will get the glory and God will build his church with that home that's right and it happens in that home and then it happens in this church and you can hinder listen to me you can hinder what's going on here if you don't get it right out there hello is that the truth? Let's do it. Let's do it. Father, I love you today. I thank you. What a good God. What a faithful God you are. Touch us by your spirit. Lord, there's areas that need to be shored up. Areas that need to be built and rebuilt. Thank you, Lord, that you haven't forgot Kingston. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing something new and something fresh. Thank you, Lord, that our best days are ahead. They're not behind. Thank you for the strong foundations throughout the years. But we also know, Lord, just the facts, Lord, when COVID hit and church transitions hit and pastoral vacancies hit, that things for any church that goes through that, it begins to erode and deteriorate. God, we want to help rebuild and help us, Lord, to be honest. Help us to be honest and help us and help this to be a safe place to have some of those conversations. We love you today. I want you to grab your prayer sheet. Grab your prayer sheet. This is how this is how we're going to end this service. This just for the next few moments, just play something. And I want you to grab that prayer sheet and I want you to pray that. You, don't, you can pray it vocally, you can pray it silently. It doesn't matter, but I want you to pray that. I want you to pray that. Oh God, open my eyes that I might see my church as you see it. Open my eyes that I may see my church as you see it. Let me see where change needs to take place. Even if it's painful to me. Use me, Lord, I pray. To be an instrument of that change, whatever the cost. Come on, pray it again. God, open my eyes. church as you see it. Let me see where change needs to take place. Even if it's painful to me. And use me to be an instrument of that change. Now one more time, let's pray that. differently you're going to take this same model you're going to take the name church out and you're going to replace it with family amen amen instrument of that change whatever the cost touch my family touch my family let me see where changes need to take place even if it's painful to me use me I pray to be an instrument of that change
minister to him. Lift those hands all over this house and minister to him. Minister to the Lord. Pastor, what is ministry to the Lord? It's when you give God praise. You minister to him. And while you minister to him, he begins to minister to you. God bless you.